All right, what is going on today, guys? So today I got the opportunity to chat with Adrian Leung. I'm gonna throw his Instagram name right down here as well as in the description of this video. Go and check him out. He used to be a trainer at a gym that I used to work at and I've kind of been able to see his journey online, uh, basically transforming from you know working in a commercial gym to more of an independent online platform where you know he's working for himself as an entrepreneur, starting his own business and you know he's found a lot more success in working for himself I find his open-minded and motivating mindset to be kind of inspiring because you know through the challenges he's overcome he's been able to you know learn a lot not just about business but also about himself so without further ado I hope you guys enjoy this conversation as much as I did and one more thing if you guys are liking these interviews that I'm doing and you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when I release these interviews every single week. If not, just watch this video and enjoy. <laughs> All right, bang. We are recording. I'm here with Adrian the Young. Adrian. He's a personal trainer. He works in the Burnaby area, but he started his own on online platform now. So Adrian, why don't you give yourself a little introduction, tell people where they can find you on social media and tell people what you're all about. Yeah, so uh, I run a company called, an uh, online personal training uh, business called uh, ASAS Fitness. Um, initially, I met Mark at uh, Steve Nash and I was an in-person trainer and um, he was the assistant uh, GM there. Um, and I guess everybody just went their own way. And um, um, I stayed a little bit longer than Mark. But uh, after, I'd say, after maybe like four or five months when uh, Mark left, I started my uh, online business. And what my business is, is um, I niche down on women. So right now I'm uh, training women across the world, uh, all, all online, right? So I have a client like in, uh, in Paris, France, one in like Malaysia, one in Spain. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm sitting in my house a little bit too much some days, <laughs> but um, it's nice, man. It's nice. It's, it's definitely a change from like, being in a gym like six days a week to like being on my chair six days. But um, I'm really happy with everything because I'm um, having an impact. Like I'm helping these women lose quite a bit of weight. So it's a, it's a nice change. It's beautiful, man. And so how have you kind of liked in terms of like the impact you can have on people? How have you seen like the change between doing it in person and doing it online? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, obviously both are good in terms of helping people right there's 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 pros to both right seeing people in person is it's great for a pure beginner that's learning technique like never touch a number on their life mm -hmm. um and just helping them with form and uh proprioception all that good stuff but um uh, things have been changing man <laughs> things have been changing and ever since this like coronavirus happened like just a snap of the finger and just all gyms are closed mark like mm -hmm. a lot of people are now going online and finding help because people still need help and a lot of people are going online right now. And um, when I started being an online trainer, I'll be very, very honest, like I was super skeptical. I was like, how the heck can you help somebody lose like 10 pounds? Like let alone like 30, right? Like mm -hmm. online. And, but ever since I jumped in, it's, it's, there's some benefits. There's some more benefits to online in, in aspects such as like nutrition. Um, so I do spend a large chunk of my time writing like meal plans and, customizing like meal plans, trying different dieting strategies with different clients. And as an in-person trainer, like I didn't really have that time. I don't think I was even able to write meal plans for liability reasons. So there's definitely like pros and cons to like both. Uh, one thing's for sure though, a lot of things are definitely moving online. And um, at least recently, like ever since this fire started, Mark, like a lot of people, there's like a whole rush of people going online. Mm -hmm. um, so it's crazy what happened recently. It's like what they said is like the online world actually fast forwarded like 10 years. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I could see that yeah. because less and less people are, you know, wanting to go out and do a lot of services in, in public. They're wanting to, you know, shop for the groceries online, shop for a lot of their things online. So if mm -hmm. you do personal training online, like why leave your house if you have the equipment, right? Why pay for the gym membership? You can just get, you can just pay for the help, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I know a lot of gyms are being open right now and, um, a lot of gyms are being open right now, but I, I truly believe that like personal training will trend towards online eventually. Um, and a lot of people are getting smart nowadays. A lot of business owners like brick and mortar business owners are actually doing like a hybrid style. 
they're doing like in-person clients and they're also doing online clients as well, doing online personal training. And I think that's a very smart way to be um, having um, a, a system, a personal training system. Right. And do you think now that gyms are kind of opening back up, do you think you'll adapt more of like a hybrid system or do you think you'll just stay like exclusively online? Yeah. So um, it's funny, man, because like when I, when I first quit Steve Nash, mm -hmm. Mark, I was actually scared to go full time online because there's that thought in my head. I was like, I was an in-person trainer. I've been an in-person trainer for so long, for like a year and a half almost. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was actually doing this, Mark. So when I quit Steve Nash, started my online business, I was actually doing the hybrid setup, but more so in-person. So I was doing in-person mm -hmm. and then seeing a lot of clients. I was seeing private clients uh, at a private gym and I was doing like online on the side. Mm -hmm. And then um, what happened was I started to, I started to like um, move away from like the in-person um, uh, basis. And then I guess this virus helped me, this coronavirus time helped me because I actually stopped why well, I couldn't train people anymore. So I just did a hundred percent, um, online and, um, funny enough, like I was actually the busiest, like the last two months were the busiest out of my like entire life. Right. Um, doing like my, my online uh, business. So thank you, man. So even though like gyms are reopened, I guess it kind of opened my eyes to see that like the possibility is there, like people are helping people online and I still do like to see clients like time to time. Like it's still fun. Like I said, I do sit on my chair a little too long some days, but um, I still do want to see clients and I guess I'll see like my very close clients like once every two weeks or once a month, but it's not really for revenue. It's mainly just as like to see and check up on my client. But I think right now it is full time, uh, online for me. That's sweet, man. And so yeah. I, I usually like to ask these, uh, like personal trainers. I like to ask like the, the common question, like what, what got you into fitness before you were a trainer? Like what got you into fitness yourself? Yeah, man. So um, for me, and to, I'll just tell, tell a little like backstory and like my history. So for me, I was always like a skinny kid. I was always skinny. Like people would call me like giraffe neck in like elementary school. I was always like skinny. Uh, what happened, Mark, was it was right before um, high school. Um, I actually took matters into my own hands. So I purposely ate a lot of food. I actually have pictures on this on my social media. But um, I ate a lot of food and I actually gained like 30 pounds within a year. And I was actually overweight for a little bit. And you probably didn't know that, Mark, because I remember when you were working with me, you were like, Adrian's like more on the lean side, right? Mm -hmm. um, I had a phase when I was um, overweight, right? And I was struggling at the time. I, it, I wasn't happy with how I looked. Um, and I was actually consciously at a young age trying to lose weight. So my strategy being like 12, 11 was to not eat. And I'll tell you, it's funny, Mark, because like when I was before that, when I was upset being skinny, I always went to bed feeling like I had to eat more, I had to eat more. Um, during the time when I gained a ton of weight, I was always trying to go to bed thinking like I, I got to be hungry. I overate. So I was just the relationship with food and my body was not in a healthy place at all. Mm -hmm. And I never shared that with you, right? I never shared that with a lot of people. Um, but that's kind of how my, how pretty much I started to focus on women trying to lose weight right now. Um, after high school, of course, like I got skinny again because of puberty and everything. And then in terms of weight training, how I got into fitness, Mark, it was actually back in high school. It was my um, PE teacher, Mr. DeMarco. And he, he, he showed everyone during PE class, like the fundamentals of weightlifting. And I guess that was when I actually started to enjoy it. I was like, you know, it's pretty cool working out and like seeing my biceps grow a little bit. Like, and for me, I would say it was pretty easy for me to put on lean muscle tissue because I, I was pretty athletic back then. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. I really, I didn't know what I was doing, of course, in the gym, but, um, seeing body parts such as my arms get more toned, even if it was like, you know, a little bit of like a peak of my bicep, stuff like that was, it was, it was funny. I guess that was when I fell in love with fitness when I was like 14, 15. Um, ever since then, I just been working out religiously and, and yeah. That's sweet, man. And so when, when did you kind of want to make the transition into being a personal trainer? Oh man, I got a story for this too. So um, I did tell quite a bit of people this uh, at Steve Nash. I don't think I told you yet, Mark, but uh, what happened was, so I was at SFU at that time and I was studying health sciences mm -hmm. and man, I was lost, dude. Like I was one of those students that were like, you know, if somebody asked me like, what do you want to do? I was like, I'll be honest. I don't know. Like I was giving them like an answer here an answer there, but it would inside my heart. I was like, I know it's not true. <laughs> like I don't have a freaking clue what I want to do. Right. Right. Uh, what happened? The story Mark was I had a, tr I had, I was uh, invited to be a best man for my friend's wedding in China. And what happened was I went on the trip 
just for like two weeks, man. And um, I was the best man there. And it's funny because uh, we're drinking at the, at the table at the wedding and we're all getting to know each other, all the best men. Mm-hmm. And then uh, somebody brought up fitness and then um, my friend from Vancouver that flew out with me, he was like, you know, Adrian's into working out too, right? So it was a whole, the whole topic changed your fitness. And I, they started asking me questions. They're like, dude, like, what do you do here? I don't like, how do I get bigger? And I started answering the questions, right? And they're like, dude, like, you should be a personal trainer. You should be a personal trainer. I was like, dude, like, I know nothing about like being a personal trainer. I never thought about it. It never crossed my head. So I never, never thought about being a personal trainer. It was very spontaneous. And what happened was at that time too, so I was in school, Mark, and I was also working part-time. I was working at a company called Sportball with like kids. It was just like part-time, a small job. I came back and I'll be honest, like the job was getting kind of boring. And then I was like, what the hell? I'm just going to ask my friend who's a personal trainer at Steve Nash on Green Gateway, Christopher Blankis. I was going to, I was going to ask him just what it's like being a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, sorry. And funny enough, he, um, he, he was like, you know, dude, I think you're going to be a good fit, um, et cetera. He's like, let me just get your resume. And I could just send it to, I think his name was uh, Tony Huggins. Mm-hmm. Tony Huggins, right? Tony Huggins. So it's funny, Mark. So um, he sent the resume. I didn't, like, still again, I was just intrigued. I was intrigued by it a little bit, but I had no intention of being, like, a personal trainer. Still, I was just asking Chris about what it's like. So he sent my resume to uh, Tony Huggins. Uh, Huggins brought me in, and he hired me. Um, so I was supposed to actually work with Marine Gateway and then, oh, yeah. um, and then, yeah, they sent me over to Brentwood and then, um, uh, yeah, that was when I met a Jackman at the front door. And, uh, I remember Nastasia Genova was in the front door too. And it was like all like the D- the district managers at the front door. And I was pretty scared shitless that time, but that was pretty much the start of like my Brentwood, uh, career. That's yeah. sweet, man. And so yeah. what, what have you kind of, you know, what was like the best thing you got out of personal training or like the biggest reward? Like, why do you love it so much? Yeah. So I got to say like just the, the interpersonal connections with people, like the authenticity that you, like for me, I never, personal training is more like personal relations than anything. People pay you not just to teach you how to do like a pull up or, you know, push up or bench press but they pay you because they want that connection with you. They want that buddy. They want that crutch. Yeah. They want someone, especially the someone that's brand new to, to, to weight training. Um, it's, it's an intimidating thing to walk in a big box gym and see all these big guys yelling and these like really, these girls all in great shape. So I think what I got of, um, um, being a personal trainer, in-person training, um, uh, sorry, in-person, in-person training, sorry, was being able to deal with people and like, understand people at a personal level personal level um and it's more than just the exercise part like connecting with these people understanding their personal life and just being their support system being that crush for 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 these people um so yeah definitely like the communication part the the personal relations part is probably the biggest thing i got out of um being an in-person trainer sick man and do you think that you've grown at all as like a person from doing this job at all definitely yeah. Definitely, like Steve Nash Brownwood was tough work. It was tough work, many hours, and but I think growing as a person, definitely, I think anybody that worked there, I can definitely um, say that everyone did mature. It's not an easy job for sure. Um, just besides from the sales and all that, just like dealing with people is already hard enough, right? You know, if you're serving people, anything in the service field where you're dealing with people and you're pretty much accommodating for people's requests and needs. Mm-hmm. It's always going to make everyone grow, right? Because you got to be understanding. You got to be, you know, tactful the way you speak to people. You got to just understand their pain points. You got to understand what they're looking for. And you got to have patience too, mm-hmm. because you're dealing with a wide spectrum of people. Like you got to be dynamic. You can't have one way of working with somebody and how and have it fit with everybody else. So uh, I guess in the beginning, I was struggling with that a little bit because being an in-person trainer, like, you know, um, coming in, like, I didn't know how to, like, you know, speak to everyone differently and how to, like, accommodate for everybody's needs, right? But I guess as you go along, especially when I started my business and I was by myself, a lone wolf, I didn't have help anymore. I really had to adjust and quickly pivot. Like, if I was not good at something, I had to quickly, quickly get better at it. Because if I'm not getting better at it, it's my competition right beside me is getting better at it. And he's ahead of me. So um, it's definitely humbling uh, working at Steve Nash. Um, and yeah, I'd say like dealing with people, interpersonal relations is going to make not only me, but everybody grow and, and mature as well. Mm-hmm. 
Sweet, man. And so with like the training that you're doing now, what was like the biggest fear that you had? I mean, going from like a private gym to going to like your own kind of business, like what was like the biggest fear that you had transitioning that, that type of business? Yeah. Um, I'd say just uncertainty, it just with everything, like not only like, like financial um, concerns, but also like pride. Mm -hmm. Right. I like, let's be honest here. Everybody has a sense of pride and everybody has a sense of like ego. Like they, they have expectations with themselves. So I think for me, when I made the transition, my biggest fear was just uncertainty, just with everything. Like if it's going to work, if I'm going to make a fool on myself and you know, like, like, let's be honest here. Everybody is have negative self-talk. Like everyone's going to be scared. Any, anybody, and we're speaking about this last time, Mark, like in order to be strong, you got to first show that you're weak and you got to be vulnerable. Right. So I, I made a vi video on this on my social media, on my Instagram, like a couple months ago, but I was saying like, I was scared shitless. <laughs> mm -hmm. I gave up like my clients and I, from the day I gave up my clients to like, when I was in my room, just with my laptop, I was just like, how the fuck can I make money doing this? Like I'm here in my room with my laptop. Like, how can I make money? Like, you just, you know what I mean? It's just like, you're just doubting yourself and then you just have all, you def, you're definitely going to have like the negativity in your head and the concerns every day. Um, but one thing for sure as being like an entrepreneur, it's you just got to think less and do more. Like you're just going to have to think less and do more. It's really that simple. Like whether you like it or not, whether like you're going to eat shit or not, whether things don't work out, it's like, you're just going to have to continue with it. And I think why a lot of people, um, are worried about starting a business, small business owners or, or up and rising entrepreneurs is because they're overthinking about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Right. And mind you guys, like anybody listening here, like when you're an entrepreneur or small business owner, a lot of small business owners don't even make money in the first months or half a year, but they become seven figure earners within a couple of years. So you have to be, have patience. Like Gary V, what Gary V said, like every young person, I'm sure you watch Gary V as well, Mark, right. But um, every young person is always a Mark, um, Gary, like what's your advice for a 20 year old? What's your advice for a 25 year old? And he's like, patience, patience, patience. You guys don't have enough of it. Like stop wanting this, stop wanting that, like patience. And like, that's something I'm still trying to work on Mark because I'm a guy, like I was splurged. <laughs> I was spending too much money. I want this. I want that. And like, once you have it, it's like, feels good, but it's like, it would never be satisfied. You can, you know, there's always somebody better than you out there. You make this much money. Okay, cool. But then there's someone that's better than you. Okay. When you reach that, you work so hard to get there. Okay. There's someone you have to be appreciative and you have to soak up the moment of like what you're having and experiencing right now. Like you and me living in Canada right now, we're so privileged. We don't even realize it. Like mm -hmm. us being on the laptop talking it right now and having the freedom to do this mark, you know, having water over here, like eating all this. It's like people don't even have this. And just like, I think no matter what success you reach, you have to be appreciative and you have to be grateful of what's going on. So um, what I started doing actually is like spending a lot more time with family. Like family is so important, dude. Like spend your money, spend your time, everything poured into your family, your friends as well. You know what I mean? Because um, it's not going to last forever. So I think for me, in, in terms of like my enjoyment, my happiness, it actually comes right now from giving to like my close friends and also like my, uh, my family. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. sick, man. And have you struggled mm -hmm. with, you know, keeping like happiness in the past at all? Um, yeah. So for me, I would say, I, I would say during SFU, like I was, you could say a little bit of like depression. I think a lot of students can agree with me and it, it's a serious thing, you know, I'm, I'm laughing right now, but it's, it's not right. Like when I was at SFU, I wasn't happy. Like I wasn't happy at all. I was, I was pretty miserable to be very honest with you. And I, and I did vocalize this, you know, to, to some people at work. Like I just, and I know some people watching this video later on, they're going to know like, Oh, I remember Adrian when he was really stressed out with, you know, school and everything being a personal trainer. So I would say during like, during the time when I was a personal trainer, like during my last two semesters, I definitely didn't have a, a fun time. Like I love personal training, and like maybe like when I went to work, I wasn't the happiest, but I truly love personal training. So it was tough for me back then. Um, but I guess there's, the, you know what they say, like the, sometimes the tunnel is really dark and then eventually you're going to keep walking. You're going to see daylight, right? So I guess everything kind of worked out well so far. I'm not where I want to be, but 
I think uh, obviously in a lot better place right now, just mentally, emotionally, everything compared to when I was like at Steve Nash. And it's not because of Steve Nash, it was more because of school. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like what I was taking. And then I would say for sure my last university, is, university days, my last couple of years, I was not happy at all. I, <laughs> I could say that. Yeah. Do you think it's because of like you were kind of expressing earlier while you're in school, you kind of felt like lost or you didn't really have the, like a good sense of direction. Do you think that that has something to do with it? Yeah, hundred percent, dude. Like that, that's the main thing. Like I didn't know what I was doing and just the expectations, like the societal norms, mm-hmm. you know, like Adrian, you're in, you gotta, you're in health sciences, dude, you gotta be a doctor. You gotta do something like a research assistant or you're going to waste your degree, you know, having parents that, you know, definitely the pressure is there, right? They pay, it's not cheap going to university, Canadian university, right? Mm-hmm. And you just have this expectation, societal norms on what you have to be when you go to university. And for me, it's like, I, I never enjoyed it. Like I was going to school, I was going through the motions, but I knew like, what the fuck am I going to do? I don't know if I'm allowed to swear here, but it's just coming out. Oh, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was, um, I, yeah, during that time, Mark, like, I was, I was going through the motion, and I had no clue what I was doing, and, um, and, 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 yeah, so, like, what I was saying, I feel like a lot of people, at some point in their life, is going to have, you know, their back against the wall, so to speak, right, you're going to have, like, a lost sense of direction, and you don't know where to go, you know, and I think that's okay, I think that's okay, like, you and me are very young, and, like, like we're still very young. We're still, we don't know how our next year is going to look like Mark. Anything can yeah. change just like that. But I know for sure anybody that's young and they're upset at where they are, like, don't be because things can change just like that. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you're trying different things, like things can change just like that. So um, yeah, like during school, like when you're answering your question, like you said, like, was it because like, I, I, I felt like I had no direction. Absolutely. Right. But I think that's part of a journey, a person's story, you know, like, having that time when you don't know where you are. I'm sure same as you, Mark, you kind of experience that, right? You, you feel like, you know, backs against the wall. You don't Dude, know I'm where in a go. constant state of that, man. I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's okay because you're still young. You're still very young. And what you're doing right now is impactful. You know, how you're talking to like many of these, many of us, right? Many of the fitness owners, uh, business owners, and just sharing like what makes you a person interesting is being interested in another person, like I mentioned last time. So it's normal to feel like that, bro. Like, you know, I still have days where it's like, fuck, it's like, you know, don't want to do anything. And, you know, it's like, I feel lost. It's, it's normal, brother. So I yeah. don't think anyone, I don't think anyone can confidently say they know like exactly what they want to do and exactly, you know, there's always going to be, you know, thoughts of, you know, maybe I could have done this or maybe I could have done that or, you know, maybe I'm just good at this because I've done it for a long period of time. Maybe I shouldn't actually be doing this or, you know, there's so many different yeah. things that you could be wondering. I feel like that's just like such a normal human thing to do, especially cause you're right. We compare each other to, you know, you'll always see someone else and think they have it better. And then you'll, you'll kind of wish, Oh, maybe if I had their job or if I had their lifestyle, whatever it is. Right. I feel like, I feel Mm -hmm. like you just kind of like, as people, I feel like we're just not really like satisfied a lot of the time. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's normal to not feel satisfied because it's like, it's called, what do you call it? Always going for the next shiny object. That's what we say in like entrepreneurship. Like you're always switching from here, here, the next attractive thing, the next attractive thing. You see somebody doing well over there. As they're honestly, just make, do what makes you freaking happy, man. Like that's on, it's so true. Like do Mm. what makes you happy. And I think, when you're young, like just trying everything, it's like, I don't know where I'm going to be next year. I can't guarantee you nothing. Like if I said it, it's, it's probably not true. Right. So just trying everything, um, like starting a YouTube channel is a great thing. Right. Um, Instagram, like anyone that wants to be an influencer, like do it. Like what's stopping you? Like try everything. If you want to, you know, get out there and then work a different job, like do it. Like there's, it's endless. Right. And wherever we are right now doesn't mean we're going to be there the next year or five years down the road or 10 years. And, you know, speaking about that, Mark, I used to be jealous of like um, students and colleagues in my, in my major that are going to med school, applying for med school. And I feel kind of shitty because of that. Right. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter because let's just say, you know, two years, not being a pessimist or anything, but anything can change two years for them into med school. They could be studying 12 hours at the end of the day. They're just like, fucking, I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. So things can change just like that. 
Yeah, dude. Or they could actually end up being doctors and do their whole life and do it like, like I said, like they're just chasing a career because they've just done it a long period of time. They're like, oh, I've already dedicated this many years to it. I'll just do it. And then maybe they don't actually want to do that anyways. Like they're just there, exactly. you know? <laughs> exactly. And that's the worst being empty, man. If, if you're doing something, you're, you're tied to it. And now when you actually have kids and you have a family and you can't switch, you don't have the freedom to do whatever you want. Mm. That's that'll be too late. Well, actually I can't say it's too late. You could still make moves, but not like you and me right now being young, you know? So yeah, we have a lot of opportunity. That's for sure. We do. Mm-hmm. That's Sweet, for sure. Man. Man. So you said mm-hmm. that like right now, your business isn't really where you want it to be. Where, how could you like figure it could improve? Yeah. So, um, what I want to do actually is, um, I want to, I want to, in terms of blowing up my fitness business, what I want is like, I want like 50 plus clients. Mm-hmm. So right now I have like 25 and I actually am starting a new business where I'm doing business coaching and I have one client for that. Uh, it's keeping me, keeping me very busy, but my vision for my business is to hire an entire team, um, uh, a sales team, um, people that are going to like do like planning for me, meal prepping and stuff like that. I already do some, I do have a kinesiologist on board right now, but that's only one person. So I'm going to say, hopefully, you know, within the next couple of years, if I can get my team to over like 50, 60, um, and, um, and yeah, just building a team. That's what I want. I want to build a team so that I can have the impact, still have freedom as well. Um, and ultimately I didn't men- mention this, but also why, one reason why I went into online is because of the freedom that I want to create for myself as well. Um, being able to travel, like that's kind of like my vision, being able to work and travel and bring my laptop and be on vacation. Like that's kind of like my next vision and goal. So in order for that to happen and still be in a very good and comfortable financial state, I want to be hiring like a team as well. So that's yeah. sweet, man. So how did you, cause you said that when you first started, you were kind of like, like, how am I going to make money doing this? <laughs> so like, how did you go yeah. about like developing like a business plan in general? Like, how did you kind of go about that? How did you learn how to do it? I guess, did you go on YouTube? Did you go on Google? Like, yeah. So I had a marketing coach, I had a marketing coach, uh, uh, a coach that did it before and he helped me. Um, I actually, and I also had another coach. Um, well, his name was Jason Capital and my, my coach and I were pretty much just sharing the account and it's pretty much like him making live videos and everything. But Jason Capital is like an entrepreneur as well. He's like a coach and mentor. So I had a couple of coaches that were just teaching me about mindset, like how to be strong as an entrepreneur, how to like run a, um, do well at your business and so forth. Um, so yeah, they were definitely a large part in terms of like, um, developing my business. Um, just like the logistics of how to even like have an online fitness business and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely say it's like the two couple coaches that I hired definitely helped a lot. Um, anybody, yeah, anybody that does start a business, whether it be like e-commerce fitness or anything, I think you, no matter how smart you are or how much grit or how much work you put in, you probably would have to hire a coach because there's a lot of things that you wouldn't know about if you didn't have a coach. So nice. And so how did you go about like finding a coach? Did you know them already in person or were they referred to you or did you just kind of like find them online on like a a website or? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're found online. So there's business coaches everywhere. So I had my business coach. He's from online. Um, He's actually from Calgary. Um, And yeah, so it was, it was actually online and I've been watching him for some time. Um, so pretty much just like, um, the content that they put out, it's really attractive. I'm, I'm pretty much, they're gaining my like loyalty and then like my trust and eventually they have my buy-in and then, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> so everything's yeah. online. That's yeah. sweet. And mm-hmm. so was it like tailored specifically to fitness or did you have to kind of take like more, uh, like baseline, like the, the regular, like how you could run a business and, and tailor it yourself? Yeah. So it's, it's actually very um, specific the way he did it. Like everybody, he's going to meet you where you are and where you're struggling at the moment. And he's going to help you with your biggest problem in your business at the moment. Um, and he will also, if you're a pure beginner and you, you never did anything yourself, you don't know how to even start. He's going to teach you, like meet you where you are and teach you how to build like and get started. So um, these coaches are very helpful. These business coaches, like they're just going to see where you are. Okay. Like we can start here. We can start there and get you going. If you're making this much money or doing this already, we can help you reach the next level. So yeah. So very helpful with having a a mentor, a business mentor and a coach for sure. That's sweet, man. And Mm -hmm. so with, with that being said, do you think that 
like that's like an essential thing to have? Do you think that a mentor or a coach like that is like an essential thing to have? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if anyone is starting a business, um, uh, especially online businesses, you're going to have to get a, a mentor and a coach because like, like I mentioned earlier, like even if you were willing to, you have the work ethic, you have all these things that we're looking for. Um, it, it's just going to have you spending a ton of time um, doing everything and researching yourself. And it's, there's a lot of things you just simply wouldn't know about because experience always is going to be knowledge. There's people out there that done it before and they know like the ninja tricks, so to speak on how to like, you know, um, get you like where you want to be. So I think business coaches are a must, I would say, actually, it's a must. It, it's really going to be night and day with someone that doesn't have a coach and someone that does have a coach starting their business. Um, and the thing with entrepreneurship, Marky, is you're always going to have whatever money you make, you always have to reinvest back into your business because mm -hmm. you're always continually trying to get better and better and better. So usually like business, like even fitness coaches, like online coaches, usually year to year, they would invest in a new coach so they can learn new things, um, reach that next level, et cetera. So mm -hmm. that's sweet. And so when like when you guys link up do you guys like do, do you do like video chat and then kind of go over a bunch of different things or mm -hmm. is it just like all through email like how what's it kind of look like yeah so in terms of logistics like if you were to hire like a business coach um it would be just like this over zoom right so you're gonna have one-on-one -on -one, um coaching and you're also gonna have like a community base as well where um, you actually feel not alone. Like you have a community and support group as well. Mm. Um, so in terms of communication, it would be like over Zoom, like everyone's using Zoom nowadays, right? So Zoom would be Zoom or Skype. Um, obviously constant like check-ins with like through text as well, sorry. So like Messenger, Instagram, stuff like that. But uh, a lot of communication would be over video call like this. Nice, man. And mm -hmm. so what would you say like to someone who maybe they want to start a business and you're, you're giving them the advice, obviously, that you should get a business coach? What if they were just saying like, hey, you know what? I think it's uh, a little bit too early in the process. Like, I, th I don't think I'm ready to get one yet. Yeah, so um, in terms of starting a business, like if, uh, if a person, and obviously you're gonna hear that a lot, right? If a person says that, I already assume that they're not committed to start a business in the first place. Because if uh, a person is gonna start a business, like they're gonna put some skin in the game, so to speak. Um, they're going to do whatever the fuck it takes to start a business. So money wouldn't even be the biggest issue. Um, and this is what actually separates the people that become, you know, successful in business and people that are still lagging behind the people that are actually like, you know, what, I'm going to save my money. I don't think I'm going to hire a business coach. I don't think it's necessary. I think they're scammers. Like just having that mindset already puts you in the in kind of like the losing mindset, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're doubting things you're already being a little pessimistic. Um, and what I find, at least like I have one business client, but coaching fitness clients, the people that are just like you working in Steve Nashu, you know, the people that are ready to go and buy membership, Mark, mm -hmm. they usually do get better results. They're like, fuck it, Mark, let's get a membership. Just sign me up. I don't care how much it costs. Just sign me up. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Versus someone that's like, okay, what's the next level down? What's the next level down? Like, do you have something better than that? Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time they're not going to be going to the gym that often. Right. So it's what we call like investment bias. Uh, whatever you pay for, you pay attention to, right? So for anyone starting a business and to answer your question, if it's necessary to hire a coach, absolutely. Absolutely. Like um, any great investor out there, any great businessman, they always had a, a crutch, a mentor in the beginning um, that showed them the way. So I would say absolutely. Just make sure you find the right coach because nowadays people know that this is like in the business world, people need coaching and stuff. There's a lot of people out there that do take your money and then they do not provide the service. Okay. So definitely do your homework too, because you know, a lot of young kids are ambitious nowadays and they'll just get any coach, um, preferably get somebody that, you know, have, have done it before. Right. So if anyone's listening to this and they want to start a business and fitness business, you know, who to, <laughs> who to contact, but, uh, obviously trust is a big one, Mark, honestly, like mm -hmm. trust is a big one. So it is a must, but you want to make sure you do homework and trust the person. Fair yeah. enough, man. That's yep. sweet. Mm -hmm. So when, like, how, how did you kind of feel like, you know, that your business was kind of like successful enough. You're like, okay, I think I could start teaching other people how to do this. Like, when did you kind of reach that point? <clears throat> yeah. So in terms of, um, well, we're not going to speak about money, but like in terms of like, uh, in terms of like my team, right. In terms of like my team, um, when I, I guess when I went over like 20 clients, when I had over like 20 clients on my team, 
Um, and I was getting really, really busy already. And I was like month to month and it was just like getting really busy. Like, I guess that was the time when, um, I decided I can, I can take on a business client because it's been consistent, um, having like that info and having that client base already. And if it's been going on for like month to month already, that was when I, I guess I decided that I can take on a business client. Um, yeah. So I guess like the mark was maybe over like 20 clients, I'd say when it was over 20 clients, that was when I um, decided like I can take on a business client. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like, uh, especially like during like a pandemic, you stayed consistently busy. Yeah. So, um, especially during these times I was, I was busier because I guess a lot of people are were looking for a trainer and then they lost their trainer in the gym. So, um, it's funny because during the pandemic mark, like I, I was at the same fear again and that we're speaking about, I was like, fuck. it's like, I'd even wrap up my first year of business yet. And then like, this has to happen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I'd even finished my first year of business and this has to happen. I was getting in that mindset where I was getting scared again, getting really fearful. And, um, I just had to snap out of it. It took some time. It took like, you know, over a week to, to be very honest with you. Like I wasn't, I remember that week. It was definitely not a good week for me. I was really scared and the thoughts of folding my business and everything was real because I was like, okay, like, I don't know what's going to happen. People's not going to buy because people lost their jobs. Right. But then I was like, the think let's do more thing. I was like, I have no choice, but to just keep chugging away. Like, right. So that's mm -hmm. Were, do, were you always like this kind of this persistent and this confident in your decisions? Um, no, no, no. It's like when I'm like, even like during the start of like the, the, the coronavirus, like I was, I was being a little bitch. <laughs> like I was scared, man. Like I was, I was, I was complaining and I was saying like, why does this have to happen? A lot of things I can't control. Right. Um, so it's just, I feel like venting is normal, like venting and being pissed and showing your true emotion. It's normal. We're human, Mark, right? Like when you're mad about something, vent. You need to vent. But you can only vent for so long. Mm. You can only vent for so long because afterwards, people will just get tired of venting. People don't want to hear it. And you just got to, for everybody, you, they would, everyone just has to suck it up. And you just got to keep going because that's just life. You got to roll the punches, right? Like when life throws curveballs at you and crap at you, you're going to have to eat it. And no matter what, like, it's just like the mentality that I had kind of built over, over this year being like a business owner. Like you're going to have things come up that are, you don't want, mm -hmm. you're going to have just bad things come, but you just, that's just life. You just got to roll the punches. You just mm -hmm. got to roll the punches. And funny enough, the people that are like the role models that at least for me, the, my role models, like they're the ones that had the toughest upbringing. Mm -hmm. They had the toughest upbringing. They, they had the toughest, you know, the mess, even messed up things that happened to them, you know? So you just got to roll the punches in life. That's sick, man. Mm -hmm. and, and did you always have that kind of like, uh, like foundation set up for yourself? Like, were you always kind of like that? Or did you struggle with that before? Like, you seem like you um, kind of got yeah. that figured out, drilled into you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess like, like being a business owner, I guess it, it helped me, Mark. Like when I was younger and in school, Mm -hmm. um and not doing what i wanted to do and and trying to figure out things I, I guess my mindset was not the same because you know i first didn't have direction and i think to answer your question like i think when you do something you really enjoy and you're actually getting results from it i guess that builds a confidence right so i guess like um you and me working in a gym right so when someone wants to lose 30 pounds like their mindset before it's not only when they lose that 30 pounds also the change in mindset they experience right so before 30 pounds they're scared they're talking to you, Mark. They're like, you know, I'm signing up for membership, but I need a trainer really bad. I'm just not confident. But after 30 pounds, you're like, you're like, holy crap, Alyssa, like you're a totally brand new person. Like you not right. only change physically, but you, your whole mindset is different. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You're just more outgoing. You're more bold. You're more of a risk taker. So I guess like when you get the results you want, I guess that builds your, your, your mindset and your confidence as well. Mm hmm did you struggle with kind of like confidence and mindset at all before you, you were a business owner? I did. I did for sure. I did for sure. And I think if anyone said they didn't, I think that's a lie. Right. So like, um, yeah, even in university, university beginning days and trying to fit in, of course. Right. You're always trying to fit in. And then, um, it's just like fit, not only fitting in for like, you know, occupation and fitting in for like what I want, what I'm expected to be after graduating, but like, you know, um, at school or just like what, um, just in general, just being, being a guy, like expectations that, like, you know, you gotta have this, you gotta have that. 
And then, um, so I guess confidence when you're younger, it's like not as high. And obviously confidence is always going to go higher and higher. The more, the more, um, how can I say, the more success you get and the, 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 the more you do something, you feel passionate about it. That's where you build confidence and you create an impact. But um, before, like during like university, I would say like confidence definitely wasn't as high as right now in terms of like the mindset and everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. That's sick, man. And was it mainly your business that kind of helped shape who you are right now? Like running, running a business as an entrepreneur, or was there anything else that was kind of like fundamental to that like shift in mindset? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess it all started from already at Steve Nash, right? Because I never worked a job that many hours and had to deal with people that closely. So I guess at the start of Steve Nash, it already was like kind of the, the uh, maturity um, journey for me. Um, and I guess, I guess like grinding out university like the last two semesters and actually finishing it, that was a major confidence boost as well, Mark. Right? Because I honestly I didn't say, but I was actually failing one of my courses on my last semester. And for me to graduate, that's wow. you know, I know a lot of people think that's not a big deal. For me it was because I put the toughest co- uh, courses at the very end and it was it was definitely not enjoyable for me. Um so I guess that helped me graduating school was kind of like the next milestone for me. Um, and definitely starting the business without a doubt, like starting a business, I think for everybody is, is going to be tough and it's going to teach you a lot of things and life lessons for sure. Um, because you got to just trust yourself and you got to be independent and you don't have anybody that's going to help you. So, yeah. Yeah. No kidding, man. I actually, I didn't finish a uh, post-secondary school, man. So congratulations on graduating, but you know, the nice thing yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is that you're actually able to use your degree in what you're doing, right? And you're actually enjoying it and you're having fun. So it seems like it worked out perfectly well for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Sick, man. And so, yeah. like, would, what would you say to someone that was kind of like, you know, in university or college right now? They're maybe like second, third, maybe fourth year. And they're maybe kind of feeling like they're lost and they don't really know what they might do. Like what, what, what would you kind of tell them like in terms of, you know, finding a direction to go in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my, my advice for them is do, do everything that is in your head. Like anything that you feel like you want to like aspire to be, or you want to try do it because this is the opportunity. Um, if you feel lost in school, don't worry. I was there so I could relate to you and it's completely normal. You're not supposed to, I would say you're not supposed to know what you're going to be in 10 years. That's a beautiful thing about it. So instead of thinking that you're supposed to fit in, think about how it's normal not to fit in, right? And that's the beautiful part. You're not supposed to know where you are even in the next five years. Um, so I would say uh, two things, maybe uh, be curious, right? When you're in, in university, so you're young in your twenties, like you and I, right? Like be curious though, just be really curious with everything. Learn, like if, whatever you're curious and learn about it, study more about it right? Um, and number two is patience again. You just got to be patient because it's so easy to compare. But like I mentioned earlier, Mark, like when you just constantly compare and I, young people are always comparing. They always want to beat this person, be better, be, you know what I mean? And I, 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 got, I got to be honest, like for me, I'm like that too. And that's something I got to improve on. But um, like you will never be at the top like the top echelon don't compare do what makes you genuinely genuinely happy like mm-hmm. do what genuinely makes you happy nobody would know except for you everything to everybody but at the end of the day you be very you do not have to you know, have a house. You do not have to have an apartment right away. You do not need to have a nice car. You do not need these things, right? Unless you really, really want it. But it's like, that's where you learn. If you did actually, you know, waste your money, get a car, right? <laughs> right? Like you, you learn from it, right? And it's like, that's where experience comes in. So don't feel like you have to fit in. And, and yeah, so be curious and be patient outside. Nice, man. So mm-hmm. we're coming up. I know you got a call coming up after this. So I do want to save you a little bit of time. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's been great having you, man. I wanted to thank you so much. But before you go, I do have a requirement for everybody. Before you mm-hmm. leave, you do Absolutely. have to share a positive message for everybody. Positive message. Yeah. Mm. That's okay. why I put everybody on the spot. I know everyone gets like this, dude. It's perfect. Yeah, I got to think about something good. Um, positive message. 
Does it have to be relevant to like what's going on right now or just in you general? You can say whatever you like, whatever you like, whatever you think that maybe could help somebody out. Yeah. Okay. I'm going um, to chill out, man. Yeah, for sure. So this <laughs> no, might I'm be just... a little bit long. This might, this might be a little bit long, but um, let's say starting off with right now, at least what I tell my clients. Um, I know a lot of people in terms of their mental health is not at their, i not at its best right now because of the coronavirus. And especially with the, the George Floyd um, incident um, that happened. And I know it's causing a lot of people like um, a, a lot of stress and then, you know, their mental health is not going to be at its best. Mm-hmm. Um, what I can say in terms of that is a couple of things. Um, first is know yourself. What I mean by that is that social media is really in our face right now. If you're a person that gets emotionally drained and emotionally, um, you just, don't feel good watching all this social media and everything detach from social media, detach from social media, right? Because I know it can be a double edged sword. Like it's good to be updated with news. It's another thing to just see another car burn on Instagram and that makes you feel upset. So detach from social media. We are privileged to live in this era, Mark, where we have social media and it's really cool. Like 10 year olds have cell phones too, but it could also be bad for us as well as human beings. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking about that and carrying on, it's beautiful right now in Vancouver, right? The sun's coming out. It was a little rainy earlier, but go out there. Just stop looking at your phone. Like I'm, it's contradicting me. I'm an online trainer, so I have no choice, right? And I, I, and you know what? Speaking about that, that's why I'm speaking about this because I realize that I experienced this as well, being on my phone all the time. Like, don't look at the laptop. Stop watching TV. Stop like going on your phone. And with all the crazy shit going on in the world right now, just go outside with your partner. Just go for a nature walk. Suck up the fresh air. Like go somewhere green, just get away, get away just for your own mental health. And I think one of the best things for the own, uh, for a person's mental health is just getting out there and just enjoying nature, get the simple things in life. You know what I mean? The simple things in life, we have air, we have like the green trees, et cetera. So I'd say that's my first thing for, um, for everybody. Uh, everybody can benefit from this uh, right now, right? Everybody, young, old, doesn't matter, right? Um, the second thing in terms of, I guess, since we spoke about like business and stuff, this whole topic, mm-hmm. I guess for um, everybody that is watching that wants to start a business or they want to take a risk, like Mark, he's doing a brilliant job starting his YouTube is, um, channel right now. And eventually, you know, he's going to make something big out of it. And I know it because this guy has talent and he's a really authentic and down to earth guy. And I swear to God, I don't want to say that. Right. So this guy will blow up if he continues what he's doing. Okay. Um, just, Bless. yeah, no worries. Yeah. So anybody that wants to start a YouTube channel like Mark, if anybody wants to start a business, a fitness business, if anybody wants to do anything that is out of the norm, so to speak, right? Not like a, a regular thing to do, do it. And I know it, you know, that's expected, you know, Adrian's going to say do it, right? But like I mentioned earlier, and I would say this, keep this in mind, just think less and do more. And I think a lot of times in this world, like the people that make it ahead of other people are not the people that are smarter are not the people that have a better degree. It doesn't matter about degrees nowadays, to be very honest, right? Um, it's about like, who is gonna take action? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna take action? Are you going to like flaunt about your, your, your degree and that? Because nobody really gives a shit. Just the reality of it. Are you gonna take action? Are you going to like Mark, like, hey, I'm thinking about something off the top of my head. Should I make a YouTube video on it? Actually, you know, today's maybe not a good day. And maybe, you know, I gotta get this new camera. Like, fuck it, just, I'm gonna take out my camera right now, I'm gonna film. Mm-hmm. So like take action, take action for anybody that wants to do anything different, wants to make a change. Don't listen to other people as well. So I'm going to get get onto that, but take action. That's the first one. Don't think so much and take action. Number two is you're always going to have negativity. You're always going to have people that are going to doubt you. Even yourself may be the biggest doubter. You may think that what you're doing some days, it's, it's, you know, it's not worth your time. You're going to doubt yourself. And that's normal as well. And you have to be self-compassionate. I feel like in your journey of understanding yourself, you have to be yourself's best friend. If you don't feel good, like it's understandable that you don't feel good. Like we're human, man. We're human. I'm going to have shit days. You're going to have shit days. Absolutely. Some days as long as the others, dude, like depression, it's like, you know, we, we all have it. We all experience it. You know what I mean? So opening up and being honest. And I know Mark's, like I said, he's a super authentic down to earth guy. He vocalizes everything that he, he says. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's great. We need, I said this to Mark, I was like, we need more people like you. 
and I That's really true. truly mean it. We Dang, need more people man, like you, that. dude. Because I think the same about you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. We need more people like Mark because we need that authenticity. We need people to bring up, especially like what he's doing, bringing up mental health awareness. More people need to speak about it. It doesn't make you a mad to like hold it in and not speak about it and take it out on your partner. That doesn't make you a man. A man is where you speak about it and you lead a, 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 um, awareness. You have people listening to you and you have people following your lead. That's a true leader. That's a man, right? So speak about it and each one teach one, each one help one. Like that's what we, that's what it's about, man. That's where the shit is, man. Not like, you know, holding things in and not being honest, not being transparent. So just in general for everyone in terms of my um, two other tips, the first is anything you want to do in your life, um, do it, right? Um, be a risk taker and do it. Think less and do more. Okay. Number two, like don't block out the negativity and block out like, like what we mentioned earlier. Don't have to fit in societal norms. You don't have to do this. What other people say, even your parents, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and also like be authentic, I guess, like be out there, be transparent, like whatever you want to do, like do it, be authentic, be passionate about it. Um, and a good things will come to you for sure. That's beautiful. Yeah. man. I think that's like yeah. my biggest takeaway that I, I like. I like that, man. Think less, do more. Do more. That's, think less, that's do gotta more. be my biggest takeaway from today <laughs> because you know, the times I feel the worst about myself in terms of, you know, creativity or anything like that is when I kind of find myself stuck thinking about things like, Oh, should I do this? Like you said, like, Oh, should I wait for this? Should I do this? Should I do it this way? Like maybe I could do it better if I just wait, like there's always going to be like that thought of, you know, should I, could I improve this before I show people, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I like that. I like that a lot, man. That's my biggest takeaway. So thank you so much for that little yeah, like, yeah. Little nugget. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course man. Like, yeah, dude, like if someone told you they're knocking it out of the park every single day, that's just not human, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not human, man. Like, you know, if you make a video, you know, on YouTube or for me, I finished and it's, we stuttered and we got stuck, dude, like people understand. And that makes it even better because that's a human experience. People mm-hmm. get nervous. People, you know, people are going to make mistakes. People are going to like vocalize things like they had a bad day. And this, and that's makes it a human experience. That's where you can connect with people more. And that's more humanized. And we need more of that. Yeah, man, absolutely. I completely agree. I think, uh, I think people are just kind of stuck. Like, you know how you can throw filters on Instagram pictures? Like people try and filter <laughs> everything, man. Like literally everything, everything they say, everything they put on Snapchat stories, Instagram stories, you know, anything, even like, you know, like the outfits that people put on or the way that we shop, like, it's just kind of, you know, like you said, you always want to kind of one up people or, you know, like, Oh, this guy's got a brand new car. So I have to go and buy a new car. <laughs> You know, all my mm-hmm. buddies are starting to buy houses or whatever it is. You know what it is? Like, you, you're always comparing to other people. So it's kind of a, yeah, that's mm-hmm. definitely, it's definitely a weird thing, man. Yeah. And that's what I was mentioning before, Mark, where it's like social media can actually be a double-edged sword. It could be good. It could also mm-hmm. be toxic, right? And what you read and look at, it's, it, you got to be very careful. It's just like food for your body, right? Like information you read and look at is like food for your brain. Um, if you yeah. just constantly absorb the wrong like information, you're just going to tarnish your own mindset and your own brain. So you got to be careful what you look at and what you feed your mind every day. Dude. Yeah. hundred percent. I actually, for a long time, I kind of didn't ever want to pay attention to the news. Like not that I didn't watch it. I actively like avoided it. I would like, people would try and tell me and I'd be like, I don't, I don't want to hear about it. Like, like for the longest time, because it, I was just like in such a, such a weird mind state where like i just feel like so sick and tired of hearing about negativity (laughs) straight up dude for sure like like we don't need to see another housing being burned down like uh you know it's like we get we get what's going on (laughs) and thanks for the update but you know sometimes you can just tune out from everything dude like (laughs) yeah i think like just in general in terms of like just checking out from the news because it's like you know, they only play things really that are going to get it like a, like a negative reaction, like an addictive kind of reaction, right? People are kind of addicted to it. So it's kind of like, dude, mm-hmm. like enough, enough. Like I kind of, know. I know. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. It's not. Yeah. Anyways, like I said, I know, <laughs> I know you got a call coming up. I don't want you to be late yeah. for that. I want to give you enough time to prep yeah. for that. So 
Thank you so mm -hmm. much, brother. If there's anything yeah. you want to say, shout out, so your, uh, shout out your Instagram and shout out your social media one yeah. more time. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you guys can add me on my Facebook. It's, uh, it's going to be my name, Adrian Leung. Uh, my Instagram is going to be called ace-fitness. Uh, and yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so yeah. much for your time, bro. Peace yeah. out. Yeah, thank you so much, Marky. Talk next time. Later.